All right, hope everybody can see that good. We're doing our best to kind of get the lighting right. Um, if you've got any questions, we'll be around. Coach and staff, those guys will be around. And I'm really excited uh, to, to come in and have all you guys come in here and us talk about, you know, running football tonight, about our program, about everything we've got going on. So I'm going to try to go through things fairly quickly because it's a lot of information, but it is stuff we're, we're really excited about. What you see down there at the bottom, our chain is strong because our links are strong. It's something we're working with each of our young men about right now is making their individual links strong. There are no weak links in our chain. Uh, we're talking about that with our ninth grade all the way up to our 12th grade. All right, So that's, that's through our entire program. It's not just a varsity thing. It's through our entire program with our guys. And it's a, a, a well-rounded approach. We're not talking about just in the weight room. We're talking about entirely as a link, uh, whatever that means. We're talking about academics. We're talking about just attendance at school. We're talking about attitude, character, all of those things. And we'll talk more about that as we move through. The big thing for our program, the program mission, our kids know this, they should know it. Um, you know, we talk about it all the time. You know, they are expected to, to do that. They had to work on some of that today in weight training class. And uh, those things encompass a lot of stuff. But the big thing is build a championship man or build championship men. We feel like the championships on the field will take care of themselves if we invest in these young men and really build into them what a championship attitude is, a championship lifestyle is as a young man. And so when we're looking at that, we've got several facets of that when you're talking about a football team. Obviously up top, we're student athletes first, so our best grades. Everybody has a different ability, but our best grades, all right? Our best ACT, okay? Our best effort in everything we do. No one is perfect, but we can give a perfect effort every time that we're here. Every time our feet hit the floor and every time we get up and go to school, we can give a perfect effort. And we expect that out of our guys. Weight training, obviously, is a big part of our physical development. Several of these guys are running track to physically develop. Skill development also for their individual position. All right? So what your position is, if you're a linebacker, if you're a quarterback, those kind of things, working on your trade, your craft to develop yourself as a football player. Leadership development, team building, could throw in their character development as well. That's really, to me, is the untapped resource. Right? Something we gotta work on. Family atmosphere. Everybody in America breaks it down on family at some point in time. Kids get in, oh yeah, break down on family. We really want that to be true. And all the things that entails. Selflessness, sacrifice, all those things. Accountability of each other, championship facilities. Obviously, we've been working on that. We'll continue to work on that. It's always keeping up with the Joneses type thing. Equipment coming with, and we also best coaches and best mentors. By that I mean not that we got to find better coaches. All right. <laughs> what I mean is we have to continue to develop all of our coaches. The game of football, as you guys can attest to, because you guys, I know there's a lot of y'all out there who love football and have seen a lot around here, has changed and will continue to change, and we have to continue to change with it. We have to continue to develop our training strategies our X's and O's, and so part of that is continue to train our coaches and prepare them for whatever the game has in store. Also with that is continuing to, to prepare them with ways, whether it's technology or whatever, to help our young men. Many of you may or may not know, but now on the sidelines, we have iPads that we can see the game basically live, one, one to two plays after it happens. All right, so adjusting on the fly, any practice, working with those types of technologies is still a big part of the game and staying on top of the game. But why all these things? And I'd be remiss if I didn't say this and tell you guys this. But what you need to know about me, and our, our boys know this about me, just, and I'm not going to get on a soapbox here, and, and, and I'm not trying to, uh, I guess, preach to anybody. But what you need to know about me as a coach, and why these standards are important again, to me, is I'm a born again Christian. All right? I'm very strong in my faith. All right? <laughs> Those standards, those things about my faith are the reason I choose to coach. All right? To teach selflessness, to teach team first, to teach uh, accountability, that we all are responsible to each other. In fact, it's really a reason why I'm having this meeting tonight as part of the accountability factor, but also um, I grew up in the church. My dad, being an associate pastor, he, uh, he was basically a bookkeeper a lot of times. All right? He's a certified accountant, certified public accountant. And so... I remember having to, uh, to be at the church sometimes for uh, business meetings, you know, and having to go through those things. And so I want this to be a very transparent program, open about what we're trying to do, what we're wanting our young men to do, 
because we expect in our community for you to see them and to hold them to those same standards. And if you don't know that about me, then you don't understand, you know, where I'm coming from with these guys. Now, all of you guys obviously will make your own choice and profession of faith, whatever that is. But I think in understanding our program and the direction of leadership that we're going, I think that's an important part for you to understand. So what we've done this last year, and I'm going to try and take my time to go through this and then show you a few pictures of some of the stuff. All right, we started with great checks. Well, guys, started that last year. We do it uh, on a regular basis. We had some great checks today uh, about last semester. Where we've gone over some things, some adjustments with our guys. Uh, ACT prep, the last four weeks. We take ACT at Richmond Senior High School next Tuesday. The last four weeks, we've taken all of our rising seniors, our juniors, and we've done ACT prep with them for the last four weeks straight. There are four sections of the ACT. We've tried to prep each section and then tried to take a practice test on each of those sections. Right? That also obviously helps as far as our football program and we want to get guys to go on the next level to play in college. So we're trying to also develop that and give those guys opportunities down the road. Recruiting. One of the things we do there, uh, and I will go back to ACT prep real quick. Coach Denson actually helped me with that. And uh, we've had a lot of help in the county office as far as getting supplies, getting, I mean, just uh, tons of help uh, right there. So understand this is not, this is what Coach Teal is doing. This is the entire program. Several, several folks are involved with that. Recruiting. I've uh, got a couple coaches, like Coach Alfonso and uh, Coach Henson, who have helped us. We put together the videos for our guys, the highlights. You may or may not know. Now we don't send off highlights. We make things in our software in Huddle, which is how we share and watch film. And we send that to the colleges via email or via links, right? So that's how that takes place. So we've got to have, that's manpower, man hours, for those guys to help cut those films up and make that happen. So that's part of, of this whole process. Things we're doing right now, things we continue to try and get better at. Uh, Shrine Bowl Combines, we took all of our seniors last year who could go to one on a, on a and provide a transportation on a Saturday. And also we took the two Division I camps, NC State and Wake Forest, our entire varsity team. Weight room upgrades we made. We also provide two milks. Leaving that for you, I always got eight seconds every day. All right, some PB and J, and uh, you know, different things we've done with some workouts as far as providing food, those kind of things throughout the year. We've had senior meetings when I first got here. We developed a rule system that our guys follow, and they've done a good job with that. They continue to get better at it. We also went to Big Pine Retreat uh, as part of our senior group last year. Some team development stuff we worked out there. Our guys have helped with Melvin's Fun Day. Several of them have done summer devotions. Uh, we had a Thursday Raider class, and what that was is our uh, some of our EC students would come in on Thursdays during the season, and we would do workouts with them. I think several of you guys may have seen that, but it was really eye-opening and a lot of fun for our guys to participate in that. We've had several guys helping us speak in middle schools, elementary schools. I've had to go to those places, want to invest in those in those uh, kids in our community. Um, again, more summer meals. Guys have been involved with, with participating with that. And then also we've had, you know, when I say pregame meals, that also means what they've done as far as pregame meals, how they conduct themselves, how they go about our pregame ritual without taking a lot of time to do that. There's a certain schedule, a set schedule, the way those things work as a standard for our young men. <clears throat> we've gone back through, our ninth grade staff got revamped in the offseason, our JV staff got revamped, our varsity staff got revamped. We've gone through a lot of different changes and, and guys really working and we were talking about getting better in the offseason. We went to summer clinic in Greensboro. And then we've also, when I first got here, we were having regular 6.30 a.m. meetings. And then also regular meetings during the summer with all of our guys can try to, to all of us get on the same page. Upgrades down the bottom, meeting room, defensive office, some practice field upgrades. And we've updated the banners as well downstairs. If you ever get a chance to go down to the Raider Cove down there, um, you can look up and see all the guys who made it to the Shrine Bowl. And actually, uh, Perry Williams was here this week, and he came down, and he was trying to find his own his name you know, down there in and, and, and the East-West Rhyme Bowl. And it's just really neat to see him come back and do that. It, it's a, a really impressive uh, list of men who, who've been through here and contributed to this program. Just a few pictures of those things. You can see the upgrades, the practice field upgrades, kind of how things were when we got here, and uh, then some of the things we've done and we're continuing to do as I move through these slides. This is our meeting room we updated. This is what it looked like when we got here. This is what it, looked like, what it looks like now, for the most part. You get those chairs back in order. All right, you see the benches, those things. You see the banners, these are what I'm talking about. Those things hang about as large as that screen right there. All the way down, there's about four to five of those banners downstairs. This is the defensive office, what it did look like, what it looks like now. My lovely wife couldn't be here tonight. She's, she's still working. 
really helped me with that too, believe it or not. All right, so how did we get there? This is kind of a nuts and bolts thing. And I don't want these numbers to scare you, all right? But I want to be realistic. We spent over $75,000 last year to get the program up to par. Okay? And by that, what I mean is we spent on helmets, shoulder pads. You saw the four-man sled. Everything's in disrepair, tearing up, all those kind of things. All right? A five-man sled, disrepair, had to completely replace those pads. All right? Tackling rings we had to buy. All right? They had to buy one new two-man sled. Again, girdles, mouthpieces, undershirts. Well, you see, it's basically stuff so that we can outfit the team. Right? We're not talking about, hey, we took a trip and played a team in Texas and, you know, uh, had, you know had to be frivolous expenses. It averages out, if you look at it, from the disrepair and, again, I have a question up there, why is it so high? Because I know, you know, in a group this large, there are a lot of y'all going, what in the world did you spend that money on? All right? It averages out to about $470 per player. So there's 160 kids involved in football, all right, and the amount of disrepair we had to fix. 1,288, 65 spill meeting room and defensive offices. The program itself, we use the programs that you see on those tables that you're more than uh, just, we want you to take actually all those programs with you. We put them out. We've got the extras and other guys that help people run out. But we want y'all to have those. We spent $4,000, a little over $4,000 printing those. So we raised about $12,000. Well, what did that go to, coach? Well, what we did is, we spent $4,000 of it on camps to take those kids. Opportunities for our guys to go to NC State. And you got to realize it's $40 to $50 a player to go there, to be in front of those guys. And I think we owe it to the, to our young men to get them in front of college coaches. Right? Yeah, it doesn't help us necessarily win the game that night. It doesn't help us get one more point. But what it does do is let our young men know that, hey, we're saying, you sacrifice for us, we're going to do some things for you. And I think that's important. We don't want to just talk about getting guys into college and make it a cliche, and hey, this sounds really good, and we do nothing to actually help them. So we take them there. I think obviously the instruction also pays off, because a lot of times, and I love this, they hear exactly what we've been saying, and they just get to hear from somebody who's at Division One level. That feels pretty good, all right? Um, summer supplement for coaches, what I did with that is, we had several guys who had never worked in the summer. I took that amount of money, and I split it up amongst those guys to get them something for helping us. And a lot of these guys don't make anything in their here, uh, all these hours for these kids, so I wanted to kind of give back to them. Uh, if you look at the bottom, this was something with some of this repair in the weight room that the Booster Club gives you. Look at it. A lot of this has to be in Booster money. And I want to make that point. Our Booster does, Boosters do a great job helping all of our sports programs, right? All of them. And I know, I've heard this a lot since I've been here, that people need to understand that. So I'm trying to help folks understand that. You know, I ate several folks on our Booster program and said, hey, Coach, you know, we know everybody has the opinion of, Football gets everything. Oh, football. And we want them to understand, and I talked with folks before I, I did this, we want them to understand that that's not really the case. Those big boards that are out there that have people's names on stuff, that stuff goes out into all our programs. And so this was something that was given, uh, that I was in charge of updating the weight room last year uh, with several things. So we took $12,000, we bought four new racks, put two of them in the ninth grade, and we had to get rid of two that were broken downstairs. We replaced those. We went in and replaced all the benches. We got enough weight for every one of the single racks. We got enough dumbbells so that all our guys could use and do all the things we needed them to do individually with their sets instead of having to wait so long. It increases for all our sports the ability to, to train at a high level so we can perform in all those sports at a high level. Um, and then we also bought some bungees and sleds to train speed training things. And we'll be starting to use a lot of those things again now that we've come back around in the track season this year. All right? All right, so again, we talked that big number. I want to kind of break this down a little more so everybody has a lot, a lot of information. And I apologize if this is boring to you guys, but for me as a football coach, it's, it's never been boring, so it's interesting to me. So I'll try to go through it quick, and I thought a lot of you would like to know. Helmets are typically between $199 and $350. That's our price. If you were to buy our, those same helmets, it costs you between $250 and $400. Okay? So that's our price as we're buying them you know, at a lot of time. This means for 160 players in our program, it would cost, oh, excuse me, a pair of shoulder pads is 199 So 160 players in our program is going to cost a minimum of $400 per player helmet shoulder pads per player. You can see the big number there. Girdles, $30 each. Those are now, the good thing is we don't have to buy all the pads. How many of you guys have to remember learning as either a freshman or an eighth grader or something, how to put those pads in your pants, 
got the knee pads upside down the first time. All right, when you put the, try to put the five pad in the knee pad spot at the bottom, some, some reason it wouldn't fit. All right, you walk around. But we don't have to do that necessarily. All we got to put in now is the knee pads. All right? And some of y'all have because I know y'all been there. I was that guy. You put the girdle on, we get all five pads. We get a, a butt pad, all right, hip pads, and the thigh pads. All right? So we don't have that, uh, that problem anymore. But that is, we can get all those pads now in one cohesive unit. Those are $30 a piece. Knee pads are $5 a piece. Okay? A new helmet ordered this past year. To give you an example. So we don't order 160 helmets a year. Thank God. All right? But what I've tried to do since I've gotten here is we outfit about 160 guys, like we said. So that's going to take us at least 20 to 40 extra helmets to make sure they all have the right size. When I got here last year, we got a bunch of larges in our head size and circumference. And we had a bunch of medium helmets. And I don't care what kind of oil you put on the inside of the helmet. I don't care any kind of lubricant. It's not sliding down and going on us. Some of these cats got it. All right? Uh, don't start looking around the room. It's, it's most of y'all. I'm trying to figure out what I'm talking about. All of you. All right? Okay? So we, that, was, that was part of it. So you have to carry a little bit of an excess there to make sure that, that we can fit everybody properly and safely. We all know that's a big push in our sport, in all sports, but uh, for some reason, football, we you know, <coughs> collisions, all right? We really get that, and so we have to understand it, and we take that on as a, as a coach and a coaching staff. Let's make sure we take care of our, our boys. So what we did last past year, we ordered 18 helmets. Out of rotation now, 18 helmets, they go out of date every 10 years. So that means through 10 years, we'll go through about 180 helmets. Every so often we had to order, you know, 20, 22, and be like that. So now, again, y'all saw that big number. I want you to know we're being very fiscally responsible moving forward. The things we've got to do to stay in a position to spend this the right way, to take care of our boys the right way, without costing everybody a lot of money to recondition. All right? Helmets are reconditioned yearly. So safety guidelines for our helmets, they're reconditioned yearly. For about 210 helmets this past year, it was about $10,000. Okay, they go back in, they replace any padding that's aging, they replace any of the clips, any of those kinds of things, so that those helmets remain safe. They check the air bladders and all of those things. Um, even the clips, clips now are what we call quick-release pins, tongue twister. And we do that, they do that so that if something, God forbid, was to happen, you can just push the buttons and flip those things up. So they go back and replace those things. All right? Also, we did get one set of jerseys last year, jerseys and pants as per our new agreement with Nike, and that costs... A little over fifteen thousand dollars, well almost sixteen thousand dollars there. Okay, so again, you can see kind of what I'm talking about when I said where that money went. It was not frivolously spent. And this is where I come to. So many folks say, well, "Coach, what's the county doing?" You go out in the community and you talk to people. What's the county? Well, you just got to see. And I, those numbers didn't include hey, having to pay gate workers, having to pay officials, bus licenses for coaches, so that we can travel our guys to and from. Um, bus license, coaching courses. You may not realize this, but coaches have to. Uh, we have to have a $35 course. Uh, everybody has to take when they first start coaching. And we have other ones that are free that we pay for year in and year out over concussions and uh, you know, cardiac rehab, those kind of stuff, cardiac rehab, uh, cardiac um, resuscitation, those kind of things we do on a regular basis. So coaching courses are things that have to be taken care of, but we're not, that wasn't in that total. Okay. So my question with those numbers, and you can see that right there, what's your perspective on those numbers? Answer that in your head, please. Well, what is your perspective on those numbers? Do you look at it and go, oh my gosh, it scares you? Or do you look at it and say, you know what? We want to be the best. Our perspective is we want to get better. Our perspective is, you know, well, if that's what we've got to do, all right, then where have we got to go to be the best? See, guys, if we're going to have a championship mentality, it can't just be, hey, guys, put five more pounds on the ball. Hey, guys, you know, let's, let's run up that a, a 45, you know, Two tenths faster, right? Let's get five more touchdowns, okay? This is something that, and, and looking at this, perspective-wise, my belief is we look at it and go, what else, coach? What do we got to do? Now, trust me, we're not going to try and spend that amount of money every year. I'm not saying that. But it shouldn't be about that. It should be about our expectation of excellence for our guys in our community. These are some examples when we went to the Shrine Bowl Combine of the high school they were they were at at the time. Just going to go through a couple of these things. This is the weight room there. 
Dorman High School in South Carolina. All right? This is some of the wrapping of the different things that is in Burns High School in South Carolina and Woodruff High School in South Carolina. Uh-oh. Those were South Carolina coaches. Y'all know where that's at? It's right down the road. They're in our conference. So that's what I'm getting at here is, you know, we have to look at that, all right? Now, I'm not saying we need it that, all right? We need to plan for us. I will never want to be anybody else. But let's look at what is our plan, what are we going to do? Biggest needs, since we're looking at those things. So let's talk about us then. What are our biggest needs as a football program to be successful, all right? Physical development of our kids is priority number one to be successful on the football field. Now, obviously, guys, please don't take this out of context, and I don't, I'm not talking about academics, okay? I think I made that clear at the beginning how important that is. But on the field, this is priority number one, physical development for our kids. That's lifting and nutrition. Big thing we need there is, that's why we're doing the two milks. We're doing the uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches afterwards. You can't get bigger and stronger if you don't, you know, can't build the building without the bricks and mortar, all right? Yeah, I'll get you later for the bricks and mortar, I appreciate that. All right? We got to have physical. You can't be eligible without a physical. It seems crazy, but guys, that's a big need because Dr. Hall just retired. We need help getting guys physicals. We need help having somebody in the community who'll say, hey, I'll come in and we'll do these physicals and we get them knocked out before we can start participating. Because we can't do anything going into summer without that. All right? And that's, just, that's just the way it is. Our youth program development. We've got good quality in our youth program. But it's just not real big right now. All right? Errol does a great job. All right? Does a great job developing those guys. And, you know, we've had several of these guys coming through the program. Um, and he's come in and visited with us. You know, Coach Hope, though, I've kind of stolen him from, from Errol. He's our JV head coach. He's helped Errol last several years. He's helped that program. And I've kind of gotten him. We need folks in this community who are willing to get in and help our kids. Now, first off, you got to love the youngins. you got to love them. But then you got to have a desire to learn the game of football. If you're one of those people who says don't run it up the middle, you got a problem. Because it ain't up the middle. It's a trap, all right? It's an inside zone, all right? It's a dive. It might be a zero ISO, all right? That's an issue. If you want to help our kids, love the kids, and then guess what? We can get these guys, you know, coaching. We can help understand football. We can go with that, all right? Glad to. But that's what we need, guys, in our youth. We need some folks who are going to talk about technique, tell a kid how, especially offensive linemen, how to get in the stance, all right, before they get up to the, to the ninth grade. How do you get down there? Where's the flexibility in the hips need to be? Hey, let's work with that young man. I spend, I spend some time I can practice with you. We'll work on those things, all right? Developing. So that's a big deal we need to try and figure out as a community. I don't have the answers. If I did, I'd give you the blueprint up here right now. But I know it is something we've got to work on to continue to get better and better and contend for uh, state championships on a regular basis. Leadership and devotion speakers. I told you what I say to them. I always say this. I always say this. We try to make it real. But you can see them right now. They used to hear me. Some of them are already zoned out. That floor is really interesting right now. <laughs> all right? So having other folks in the community who are willing to come in, pour into these young men, all right, who are willing to come in and be positive with them, who are willing to come in and invest in those guys, we want you to be involved. It is your football team. We want, to, we want you to have an opportunity to come in and pour in and invest in these guys. Big, you see all the uh, exclamation marks there, right? Raider Moms Club. I, if I start trying to write everything up here they do, I'd be in trouble. Okay, I can't, I, but being involved. Not just moms, but guys, you know, ladies who are, who are former moms. You know, I've had several dads bringing in stuff from the Moms Club. That's just, those, those ladies do so much for us providing those meals and those things we talked up top. Continue to develop our coaches. So help with non-coaching tasks. You know, if you want to get out, we're, we're trying to, to work on some things for us, field pain and those types of things, getting logos. We don't have the time. We got time to put the lines down. But if we want to do some extra stuff, if you want to see that stuff for your kids, if you want to really dress that up, we would need some help with those types of things. And we're, you know, we're glad to have it. Right? But those things would be things that are needed and that some folks would be able to help us do. Facility upgrades down the road, again, that becomes with a, a five and a ten year plan of what we actually need. Right? Not going in and just trying to just, hey, let's just add something for the second half. Big thing there to understand the summer numbers. 
we work out 70 to 80 kids per session. There's at least two sessions, all right? We can safely get 70 in that weight room if they know where to stand on each set and where to rotate and get out of the way, right? So that is something that is a concern down the road. During the school year, it's not a concern. We do a great job. Of, we have four class periods. We can rotate kids. We get all you know, our varsity guys in there in fourth block, and that helps a lot, okay? All right, so what's the next step? I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. All right, I start seeing y'all blaze over on me. All right, so I'm going to go through it quickly. Uh, and anytime anybody wants to talk more about it, I'll be around. Meal costs us about $150 a week. It's, that's for 100 milks, all right? Over 18 weeks of the semester is about $2,700 out of the football fund. Now, that's coming again out of the money we raised from the program, not from the school funds. So we're raising that money, all right? Summer meals and snacks, whatever that costs, whatever it happens, you know, that we can give to these guys, you know, we do it. You know, sometimes you have people come in and donate a box of uh, nabs, all right? They come in and they, they drop off some, some, some Gatorade bars, whatever, okay? We give those to the guys. Obviously, that still includes PB&J. You know, I think it's a food group around here. Greensboro Winter Clinic, school does pay for this. Uh, $1,400, that is uh, what it takes uh, for registration, the hotels, that kind of stuff. The Glazer Clinic, we're going to be taking our coaches to in a um, <clears throat> in uh, March, March 9th, is over in Charlotte. Uh, that's going to cost us about $1,000. But the great thing about that is, if we do get you guys who are youth coaches, folks who want to uh, be involved, the Glazer's an online thing. So we pay one fee, and it's unlimited for the number of people I can get on the online references. Right? So as long as I have an email address on somebody, I can get them all that reference material, any kind of, it's, I mean, it, guys, it's thousands and thousands of documents and videos and football, right? So that's something we can, again, help with our, uh, our youth programs. NC State One Day Clinic, that is actually on uh, a professional development day, so we've got our PE teachers, that's our, you know, we're going to use that as our PD that day, uh, who are our coaches. Right there at the end, right before we go down to, uh, before we go to uh, spring break, um, and yes, I'm a Georgia Bulldog, so full disclosure here. All right? Full disclosure. All right? But we're going to take our guys, uh, our defensive guys, down to Georgia um, to their clinic. They have a coach's clinic down there. Bill Belichick's going to be there. Uh, obviously, you know, Georgia's football staff is going to be there. We're going to meet and work with those guys. And the real reason I looked at them is, obviously, being a Georgia fan, I watch them a lot. But the transition from year one under Kirby Smart to year two, all right? They played for a national championship this past year, all right? Uh, Mac, what do you have those Alabama, that Alabama t-shirt and stuff on you know, there somewhere? Oh, yeah, okay. So we didn't win it. That's what I'm getting at. He's got his Bama stuff on. But looking at that, we thought we could learn a lot from a staff who made such a large transition from year one to year two. You know, seven and five ain't going to cut it here, guys. I know that. No delusions, right? So what is, what's the difference? That's what we're talking about here. How do we get there? And I want to go down to a, to a staff who's obviously been able to do that at a very high level. So that's one of the reasons we're doing that. Uh, our offensive staff is wanting to go up to UNC. Coach uh, Brewer, who's up there, uh, really inspired some of these guys at the clinic we went to a couple weekends ago. And uh, they want to get more information from him on some of the things he was talking about offensively within their passing game. All right? So that's, you know, you look at that, that's around $5,000 for the, uh, excuse me, not five thousand, $2,500 for the registration hotels. For our kids this summer, the two camps we're going to be going to are uh, at UNC Chapel Hill and at NC State. Right, so um, when we're going there, it's going to be on Fridays. It's going to cost us for 60 guys about $5,000 to take them to both of those, not per, but to both of those. Right, so those are those are some of our initiatives and some of the things that we're, we're working towards. Again, next step, want to help out, want to do some things. Doctors, PAs, nurse practitioners, nurses who volunteer and help with physicals. You don't have to be that person, but if you've got that contact, all right, I don't. Okay? Our coaches don't. Coach has been working his tail off trying to create more of those. All right? But we need them. All right? And that's, that doesn't cost anybody anything. And so that, that can help us a ton. Headset additions, $1,000. Again, this isn't stuff here now that we have to do down on down. This is stuff we would like to do if we can. All right? Um, we bought new headsets last year. In order to upgrade those, we put one more coach able to speak and talk. That's going to cost us an additional $1,000. A stencil, a new stencil for the hashes. 895. Midfield logo stencil, 1300. That's what we want to put the diamond on the middle of the field. That's what we want to do. Again, we would need some help painting that. But that's kind of what that would cost us to be able to do. 
We need a new camera for the end zone setup. $300 to $400, all right? Our training tables down there starting to get holes in them, all right? I say starting to loosen. It's like it's been happening. Um, so those things need to be recovered, all right? Weight room paint, locker room paint, pride upgrades. It, and I say pride upgrades. If there's something in the community you want to do, all right, to, to show support for, for the guys, for the school in general, we encourage that. We really encourage that. To put something out that just shows these kids you love them and that hey, you're proud of them and you care about where they're doing and what they're going, where they're going to be. The bottom line down there is you know what you, you know, how much you love this program. You know what you can do. And that's the question I want everybody to ask is and answer for themselves. You know, what would you like to do? Not what do you feel obligated to do. I don't want anybody to feel obligated to do anything. But I want you to feel a part of this program. Right? I want you to feel like, hey, what can I do? Right? I, what would I like to do? I'd love to see the guys be able to do this. I'd love to see this and what you can give to them. And we want to just provide a, a means and a vehicle for you to be able to do that uh, for these young men. All right, so here's some things and some ways in which you can help. Sponsor money for initiatives. Those initiatives I've already been over. Coaches, clinics, players, camps, summer meals. If you want to do the stencil with those things. But we always need food for the guys. Some of you folks are tremendous cooks. Just give me a, you know, hey, coach, I love to do it. I'll give you a day of time. Come on, all right? Um, Lysol wipes. <coughs> How many of y'all are mamas out there? Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. That many? Can you imagine that many in your house? All right? Now, some of y'all are trying to get that many in there, and I appreciate that, all right? But they need to wipe down everything every day, okay? And so we do Y'all laugh because you're thinking about that locker right now with a dog on, you know, sweet tar wrap or whatever it's got sitting in it. Empty car of milk. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> Water, Gatorade, obviously, those things are always, you know, appreciated because the guys are, you know, we try and get a lot of sweat out of them. Um, you can support our game program. If you have a business you want to advertise in there, then you let us know. Um, we actually had a couple of parents do personal ads for their kids last year. That's well. If you want to just, you know, hey, you love this season, put that in there. Love that. Um, Raider Moms Clubs. The summer meals. Uh, they help provide the homes. That, they're going to help work the home scrimmage. We've got a home scrimmage against Marlboro County this year. And uh, they're going to help do concessions. Uh, they're going to be volunteers and help them. Um, away game, they give us snacks before we get back on the bus. All right? You run into that problem and get, get halfway home and that kid's cramping in the back. It always helps if you had something to eat, something to drink before you down on the bus. Um, ninth grade pregame, that still needs to be worked on. We're still filling out the JV. I think we've got most of the varsity pregame done while he's got it done. Uh, give a kid a ride to practice or workouts. And this is these last, I already said help and physical, so I'm going to skip over that. These last two are the biggest reason for us being here tonight. The things that we that get in our way the most, like I said about the physicals, are guys just being able to get here. Guys, you know, they, they love it. They want guys to be able to get here. If, if you pass one of the guys' houses on the way here, all right, especially our young guys, the ninth graders, all right, um, we had several guys who were in the ninth grade this past year who should have been playing who didn't have a way to get here in the summer because we start so much earlier than they're used to. Do you pass one of those guys? Can you pick one of them up? Um, you, these guys who uh, ask your kids, your players, they'll know, hey, so and so needs a ride. That's huge for us, all right? Um, tell the younger parents, that's one of the reasons I want to have some of you that practice starts in the summer. When you get to high school, when you finish middle school ball, and we go have these conversations with the kids, but it's more important to have them with the parents. When you start you know, the high school ball, we start in June. We start in June, all right? Because we're trying to prepare them win championships. Now, we can come in July 30th, 31st, August 1st, all right, and be terrible every year. And y'all be looking for somebody else up here, all right? So... All right, so that's just the way it is. So that's that needs to be communicated. I think that's the biggest thing is having that communication within our communities and letting those folks know, hey, if we want to be good, these are the things we got to do. We got to get these guys here. Big thing down here, a positive community influence. These men wouldn't ever tell anything to you, tell this to you, but um, some of them need more positive, and especially male role models in their lives. All right, be that for one of them. Say something positive to them when you see them. Tell them how good they look. Alright? I mean, seriously. Alright? Seriously. I don't care what's what's going on. You know, that's something you can pour into those guys. Find a way to bless one of these young men. Alright? You won't 
you'd be amazed how far it goes. And, and, you know, we were talking with some of the coaches this morning, and I, I was giving them three or four stories of where one act of kindness went on to change the entire course, uh, not just of one person's life, but of, of, of you know, history in instances. And uh, don't ever shortchange that act of kindness to one of these young men. Pat them on the back, see them, love them, uh, and appreciate them. Uh, because they're going to go through this one time, and there's no place better than Richmond County, all right, for them to do it. And they know it, and they'll realize it. You know, if they don't now, they'll realize it later. I'm a year in. And you can say last year, this time when I'm having this, and I'm saying, hey, man, this is a great place, greatest place in the world to coach. Oh, man, it's, that it was just me being, you know, you know, politically correct, whatever you want to call it, publicity. I believe that, folks. Amen. Seven and five, they don't have... I believe in this place. There's nowhere else in the state I want to coach. All right? Yeah, I want you to know that. There's nowhere else like this place. There's not. And we're in a place where these kids can grow up and look forward to this for years to come. They can grow up and feel your love and appreciation all the way through. That, that can make a difference in a young man's life who goes on and does something great not because he was anywhere else, but because he got the privilege of growing up here. And that is something that I, I, I know is here, and I want to make sure they feel. Because I, I tell you, I hear folks go, you know, who are from here, who, Coach, the meal's closed. Hey, Coach, the, the raceway, it went. Hey, guys, this is a great place. This is a great place. And some of you guys are, 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 are just haven't, haven't heard that in a while. It's a great place. That's not me saying, that's not me trying to convince you. That's just, I'm still so amazed at such a blessing this place is. And I just want these guys to understand that before they graduate, before, it's, before they get out and have to look back, all right? I want them to know how great it is here. I can get, I can get on that for a while. Um, something else small at the bottom. If you have side jobs, moving, yard work. These youngers know how to work now, I promise you that. Who? All right? They know how to work. All right? They're trained how to work. I'm not asking you to give them anything, ever. But if you've got some things that need to be done, let's be honest, getting them here back and forth, we take up a lot of their time. So if you've got some of those things, all right, you know, they're, they're more than willing to, to, to help with that. We talked about some of the guys giving them schedules so they can work right now in the off season around what we're doing. I'll be remiss if I didn't note a couple of things that folks have done. Pre-games, we've got tons of churches in the community who help us do this. Robbie Stewart, he wouldn't take any credit for it, but he's over here. Um, he organizes a lot of that. David helps him a ton with that. They cook and do all those things, and that's just an amazing you know, amount of preparation goes into that. Mr. Maven, he's got a whole crew of guys who they come out and they, they cook for us at 707s uh, in the summer. Uh, the sheriff has come and, and spoke at our pregame, and uh, obviously my dad and my uncle are still talking about his message before uh, the Butler game. And he came out of his group and they cooked. And so those guys are already pulling some things guys are doing. Pat Moss came in last year with those racks I told you about. We got them for a great deal, but we couldn't get them down here. They were in Winston-Salem. He went and took the brick truck and went up there and got them for us. All right? Um, Dr. Hawswanger, he couldn't be there tonight, but he does some custom mouthpieces for some of our guys, especially the guys that have to talk a lot, linebackers, quarterbacks, those kind of guys, uh, to make sure that they, those mouthpieces will stick in there, keep them safe, but they can still use you know, their vocal cords quite a bit. Right, Pamela Walt Ishley, you see on the back of that program, the Big Pine Retreat, but they also helped with the preseason coaches dinner. Um, we have several folks who donated to sponsor those camps for those kids, right? Not just one, but several. Uh, we also had several folks donate to the Raider Moms Club. We got guys who come in and just volunteer the time to drive buses. We got folks who come in and do the chain crew. And we got folks who come in and help us up in the consent. We got folks who help and volunteer. So I don't want you to think I'm just talking about what we need and don't appreciate what we have. Quick blurb here. Our next parent meeting, y'all are all welcome, but our next parent meeting is a month from the day, March 22nd. I'm going to very quickly go over what we're doing moving forward, what we've done some this semester, what we're doing more going into this. Our Raider Leadership Council. Guys, come on up here. I want to introduce these guys. Bobby Terry. Malik Stanback. Y'all might know him as Jaya, but we got to go by Malik now so that uh, colleges know who he is. Jake Ransom. I think Jake's coming in right off the baseball field right now. John Jones. Isaiah Rattler. 
Jarrell White, Davion Lindsey, Jaheim Covington, Brian Bowden, Noah Altman, CJ Tillman, CJ's coming off the baseball field too, and Caleb Hood. We've got a lot of guys who really could qualify for this group. Right? We really did. We're very blessed with our young men. But this group of young men uh, had different traits, different things. Some of them we wanted to develop a little more as leaders. Some of them were already leaders, and we needed to give them a formal role and give them, you know, want to give them some more practice at that. We feel like that's going to pay off on the field in a lot of different ways. These guys are going through a 10-week course starting on Monday. Uh, Coach Jones has done a great job developing this. Uh, I gave him this task. And he's done a great job developing and coming up. He's got a curriculum, a 10-week curriculum these guys are going through where they're going to be trained how to lead. Some of them are already natural born leaders, but how to lead, how to speak, what are the things you need to do you know, as far as holding yourself accountable, holding your teammates accountable. Uh, and then we'll expect our team to learn from some of these guys and continue to carry those traits on. So uh, we don't have very many sophomores up here. What we want to do is put something a little similar together for the JV and those guys to earn that. Next year, these guys will have a huge, huge responsibility in helping us pick the leadership team going into the 2019 season. So they're going to have a lot of roles without going through all those things. And we want to take the time to recognize these guys. We've got a lot of tremendous young men, but understand the efforts of what they're going to be doing going forward. Give them another round of applause. For All right, Shrine Bowl Combines, March 24th and April 28th. The two closest ones, one's in Charlotte, and uh, that's the Rocky River. One is in Fayetteville, and that's in Southview. Uh, we will probably be taking the bus to the 24th. We have several conflicts on the 28th uh, within the school system, so probably be taking the bus to our guys there. Spring practice, starting March 5th. Uh, there'll be two days uh, per position. I have that on some key days. You might go into great detail with that. It's just the after track workouts for our guys. We have a women's clinic. All you ladies uh, in here, uh, specifically guys, your moms, we'd love to have them here. I want y'all to invite them there. Uh, that's the day before Mother's Day, all right? so that's not an accident. All right? We put the women's clinic there. I understand there's probably some conflicts with that, but I also think it's a great teachable moment with some of that being the day before uh, Mother's Day. We're going to have a women's clinic that day. Look for that time as I try to get it just right. Um, spring practices, we'll have a 10-day spring practice from May 14th to the 25th. And uh, then some workouts start, you know, pretty quickly. Uh, they'll be Monday through Thursdays this year. Very big change. Coach Denson's laughing because he twists them all quite a bit on that. Even Coach Williams have a lot to do with that. Um, but I think it's going to be really beneficial for our guys. I have never not worked out on a Friday in the summer in the history of my coaching career. So we're going to try something different to try and help our guys and help really our other sports teams out. We know our guys are very involved. And a lot of times those weekends they're doing things with other sports teams. And we love having guys who play multiple sports. So we're trying to work around that and do what's best for everybody. Um, again, parents, you'll find out more info on that. I'm just trying to blaze up so everybody knows. Summer camps, talked about this earlier. Friday, June 15th, and uh, Friday, June 22nd. You see that's the first one's UNC, the second one's NC State. Um, also on June 22nd, Coach Shuler, what's going on on June 22nd? Oh, get married, okay. So we'll be back early, you know, early enough for a press coach to get there. So. I know he's worried about that. All right, so he's getting married uh, on that day. Congratulations to him winning. Um, summer workouts, there are two dead weeks. Now, obviously, guys, I'm not going to tell you when to take your vacation, but I'm going to tell you for your young man's sake and being here at our Tip football team, it would be great if folks took their vacations on those two weeks because we can't do anything with them. So, you know, that would be a great time for them to join family time. And then they're not missing anything for their extended family. Um, those are July 1st with July 1st, July 15th. That's the Sundays. Our season starts this year. This is different. Normally, you guys who are old hack this, know this stuff. It starts August 1st. starts August 1st. The actual season starts off is July 30th because that's the money. So, again, if you know a kid who's in the 6th, 7th, grade, grade, don't you play next year in the 6th, 7th grade? Yeah, I know. But let's go ahead and get it right. Tell them. Let them know. This is when things start. And this is, this is something I want to leave you guys with. For those of y'all who, who may have been a little intimidated by some of the things we throw out, I can't believe in Richmond County any Raider would be intimidated by anything, but just, just in case. 
Just in case. If your dreams don't scare you, they ain't big enough. They ain't big enough. All right? Now again, that goes back to my faith, and I believe that there are things I can do that are bigger than me. All 5, 10, 185 pounds. All right? I'm still waiting on that growth spurt. Some of y'all are. <laughs> but as an example, and this is amazing, that how many of you guys know who uh, Mordecai Ham is? Please raise your hand. Anybody? Mordecai Ham. How many of you guys know who Billy Graham is? Billy Graham spoke to over 2.2 billion people. Right? Mordecai Ham was giving a, uh, I don't want to say a speech, he was preaching, but it was a, uh, help me out. Revival. Uh, revival. Thank you. Somebody said it. He was doing a revival. And that's where Reverend Billy Graham received salvation. So when you're thinking about that one act of kindness, when you think about one of those things, it's not about the credit you get. It's about what's possible in the future of these young men and what they're able to do, if they're able to move forward from that. You don't know Mordecai Ham, and you might be somebody's Mordecai Ham. One of these guys might make the impact of doing great again. And you never know. You don't want to miss out on that opportunity. When we get done here, I'm going to have a few tables. Coach Jones is going to be up here. If you got a, a speaker, raise your hand there, Coach. If you got somebody who you want to speak, you know, to our guys, you've got some contact, somebody who can, who can pour to these guys. Like I said, uh, I talked with uh, Perry Williams this past week uh, as he was here about doing some of this. If you've got contacts, we've got 17 guys playing in the NFL, all right? You've got some of those contacts, guys who can afford these guys, former Raiders who've gone and done great things. Please give him those contacts and help us get in touch with him. Uh, Coach Denson, Coach Williams, if you guys would like to, uh, to get involved in any of those initiatives we talked about, anything you want to do as far as helping these guys, any of those things, please leave your contact info with them. They're going to have a sheet, pen, and paper there. Mom's Club, Strange. Right here. Get involved with the Moms Club. She's going to be right there on the table. See her tonight. She's got a way to take down your information and get back. We don't ask you to do anything tonight. If you give us your information, we can get back in touch with you. Physicals, Coach Had. Right there. All right. If you know anybody or you yourself can help us with physicals, and that is a dire need, folks. A dire, dire need. I, I can spend another presentation talking about that. Please see him tonight and how we can, you can help us with that. Pre-game meals and FCA, Robbie Stewart right there, all right? Um, FCA does provide our guys, not for, for anything from us, but some of the churches allow them to provide uh, our guys uh, with Bibles. FCA does if they want. So uh, that's that's uh, something that they do, and Robbie helps us, like I said, organize pre-game meals. Before you leave, all parents, please, the coaches, if y'all go ahead and move up here and grab some of those. Uh, let me, I should have recognized these guys again. Guys, let us stand up, our, our, our football coaches this year. All right, move forward. And a lot of those guys are coming off of, of athletic fields coaching other sports. If y'all go ahead and come and grab the, uh, up here, and grab the, uh, the dates and the calendars, please, if you've got a young man or you actually know one who's not here tonight, take a calendar and key dates and give it to them so that they can be involved and be informed. Guys, we thank you so, so much uh, for coming out tonight. I'm going to be up here. If any of you guys want to talk about anything else, our coaches are very well informed. Uh, so if you want to ask them, they know everything that's going on in our program. Again, thank you for coming out tonight.